Hello and welcome back to part 2 of section 1-4 dealing with continuity and one-sided limits. Today we're going to look at the Intermediate Value Theorem. Now, the Intermediate Value Theorem is an important theorem regarding the behavior of a function that's continuous on some closed interval. And as you can see from Theorem 1.3, uh, it says if f is continuous on a closed interval, and remember the closed interval is represented with uh, brackets, and the function evaluated at a is not equal to that function being evaluated at b, and k is any number that is between f of a and f of b, then we know that we have at least one number c on that closed interval such that f of c is equal to k. And on a side note, from this point forward, whenever you see the intermediate value theorem, I will write it as IVT. Now, the one thing with the intermediate value theorem is it does tell us that there's at least, and I, I emphasize at least one point, okay, there could be more, but there is at least one number, C, that exists. But the downfall is, is it doesn't tell us how to find that point. This theorem is an example of what we call an existence theorem. It's pretty much telling us that it's there, but it doesn't tell us how to find it. Uh, the intermediate value theorem also states that for a continuous function f, if your value of x takes on all of the values between a and b, then f of x must take on all of the values between f of a and f of b. So just as an example, if you think of the instance of let's say like a kid that's learned or that's uh, growing um, when they're measured at let's say like three foot let's say on their third birthday when they grow over the course of the next year on their fourth birthday if they are three foot six inches then we know for any height which we'll call h between that three foot and three foot six inches they must have at some time and we'll call that time t hit a height h in the middle. So they didn't just go from 3 foot to 3 foot 6 overnight. They eventually, or throughout that course of the year, they hit every point in between 3 foot and 3 six. So that's really what the intermediate value theorem is saying. Another nice feature that the intermediate value theorem can do is it can also help us find the zeros of a function that's continuous on a closed interval. And if your function is continuous, on that closed interval and your function evaluated at A has a different sign than your function evaluated at B, then we know that there's at least one zero because you can't just go from a negative value to a positive value or vice versa without crossing that zero mark. So the intermediate value theorem can tell us if a zero exists or not. And that's actually what our last example is about. Example 6 says to use the intermediate value theorem to show that the polynomial function f of x equals x cubed plus 2x minus 1 has a 0 on the closed interval 0, 1. Now the first thing that we have to do is we have to prove that this function is continuous. And remember to prove that it's continuous we have to evaluate our function at f of a or in this case f of 0 and f of b which would be f of 1 and prove that they exist. So if I go and I look at f of 0, this is going to give me 0 cubed plus 2 times 0 minus 1. So I end up with 0 plus 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. Okay, so I'm on a good start because my function exists at f of 0. Then I'm going to look at f of 1. And this 0 and 1 is coming from my interval range there. So now I have 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 minus 1. Well, 1 cubed is 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 1 is 2. So now, because both of these exist, I know that I have a continuous function. Now the second part, it says I want to prove that I have a 0 on the interval. Well, my 0 is going to come from the fact that f of 0 is less than 0, which in other words, this is just a negative number. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. And I also know that f of 1 is greater than 0, which tells me that I have a positive number. 
So because I've changed signs from the beginning of my interval to the end of my interval, this is going to tell me that I have some value that's going to fall in between here that equals zero. So we'll say there is some value f of c that's equal to zero. If you have questions on this, please make sure to ask me in class. And if we look at this graphically, we just kind of concluded. We looked at f of 0, which fell right here. We looked at f of 1, which fell right here. And if you notice, I do have some point right here, which is f of c, that does hit 0 in between my continuous function. And now it's fun fact time, or fun cartoon time. So with that, have a good day, and we will see you guys in class tomorrow.